I'm going to show you today how to make an Ethernet cable like this. I made this one earlier today. Sometimes you'll be called on to make cables just because you need to, because you, they're needed somehow. And so we'll do that today. Let's introduce our tools. First off, we have our crimper. This is a, a multi-function crimper. It has a, an eight position crimp. That's the one we'll be using today and throughout this class. Eight positions because Ethernet has eight wires. The next is six positions. Some telephone systems use six wires. And on the flip side, what's nice about this one is it has a four position also for your regular RJ11 phone systems. Now that's not a this is not a coincidence that the phone systems and the Ethernet cable use the same crimper. They're very similar and are actually closely related. I want to point out that this tool is ratcheted, which means that if you ratchet it shut, it will stay shut. And it has multiple positions. Please leave it shut. It has sharp blades here that will cut you. Please do not get blood on my tools. So that's our crimp tool. The next tool we'll use is, or the next tool I'll introduce is a teardrop stripper. Teardrop because the stripping occasion here is in a teardrop shape. There's a blade in there. You can see it, the glint of the light off of it. And when we open it, we'll actually feed our cable right in there. Don't put your finger in there. You'll hurt yourself. So you put your cable in there. And as we twist it around, it will cut just the sheath of it. We'll actually adjust that with this so I don't cut too much. I don't want to nick my wires inside. It does also have a wire cutter here, which we're not going to use as part of this. So that's our stripping tool. The third tool that I'm going to introduce is electrician scissors. They are extremely sharp. I want to point out that one edge does not have a serration, but the other edge does. And you can you can sort of see the glint of the serration here. Be very cautious. These are very sharp. They will cut wire without any problem. They'll cut though they will cut paper. It will dull the blade. Please do not dull my blades. It will cut right through bone. So your hands will get scarred like mine. Do not get blood on my tools. So please be careful with those. They are extremely sharp. Finally, we'll use a network test tool to test what we're working with. I'm going to set my tools aside and pull them out when I'm ready for each of them. We're going to be working with RJ45 jacks today. This is an RJ45. These both are RJ45. RJ stands for registered jack. It's a specific type of jack. You might be familiar with RJ11s from telephone. They are closely related. RJ for registered jack is the same in both. At the bottom here, or bottom in my picture, you have the little clip thing. I don't know if you can hear the sound. And the sound is, or the clip is called a keystone. It actually cuts it out. If you think of the old Roman arches, the keystone sat at the top to hold the arch in place. And that's sort of it's this one too. It's cut out a certain way to hold the whole thing in place. I'm not sure that's why it's called that, but it's a good descriptor because you all have had history. I'm going to be working with Ethernet cable today. Here's the cable I've got. And I'm just going to show the end that I'm working with. Oh, sorry about that. The background's coming through. First things first is to strip it. I'm going to open, and I've got it there. They're spring loaded, so I have to manually open it. And I'm going to set my wire in there. I like to give some extra slack just because it's easier to work with longer wires. And I'm going to go just once around. I'm going to open, I'm physically opening my stripper and pulling it off. I need to make sure I do that because if I don't, if I pull against this, it will not only dull the blade, it also might break something and we don't want to break things. If I've done it right, this piece comes smoothly and cleanly off. I'm going to set that over here. And here I have my wires. This is called unshielded twisted pair. It's the most common type of wire used with Ethernet installations. It's twisted pairs. There's no metal shielding on it like you might see on a coaxial cable or on any shielded cable. And I have eight conductors, four sets of two. 
four sets of two and they are twisted. So a pair of wires is twisted without any extra metal shielding. So unshielded, twisted pairs is what it sounds like. So my unshielded twisted pair wire I'm going to put in a certain order. And it's not an order that will make sense until you understand historically why it's done this way. First, I'm going to start with my orange. And I'm going to untwist it because I need it m a lot of it untwisted. Notice that there is a white wire wrapped around the colored wire. In this case, this happens to be orange and orange white, the white which belongs to orange. There is, on many of these, a little tiny strip of orange on the wire itself. You can't see it in the video. But there's a little tiny strip of orange on this to remind me that that's the orange white, the white which belongs to orange. So orange white, orange. My next wire that I want is green white. Now, why is this the case? It goes back a hundred years to when phone systems started because this was originally phone wire. Orange, white, orange, green, white, and next comes blue. Well, why not green? Well, blue is always line one in your phone. If you take apart your phone jack at home and ask permission first, um, if you take apart your phone jack at home, you'll notice that the middle two are blue and white. And the next set out are green and white green white blue blue white green blue and blue blue white and blue are because that was line one and then people in their businesses decided they needed a second line and so a second pair was added on the outside that's green white and green and traditionally that's been the coloring code since at least 1920 and I think uh, probably a couple of decades before that so it's been around a long time with this color code the last set is brown, white, and brown. This was introduced in the 30s when alarm installers and master clock installers saw that the wire was really cool. They thought the wires that AT&T was putting out back then with Western Electric, uh, you'd have to study history some of you to be able to remember that far back, but they liked the wires a lot and so they added a brown and brown white so it wouldn't get confused with the blue and green. And then in the 1980s when Ethernet when tw uh, Cat5 eth or Cat3 Ethernet then was introduced, they added the orange and orange white. So orange white, orange, green white, blue, blue white, green, brown white, brown. Here I have to fit it into my jack, and you'll notice if you look real closely, there are these slots. I'm going to fit these wires into these slots. And eventually, I'm going to push it all the way up to where these teeth get crimped onto it. You can sort of see the teeth. They'll actually get pushed by the crimper through the insulation of my wire so that it is a solid wire. So it makes a contact. One last thing, though. This is awfully long. This, these wires are really thin. They're really not very strong. And so there's a little piece right here. You can barely see it in the, in the video. There we go. The piece will hit, and you want to crimp it to where it touches this blue, strong uh, insulation. You want it to hit the blue and hold on tight so that these little flimsy wires don't have to take the load. That's where my electrician scissors come in. And I'm going to cut off a bit here. And yes, I'm just cutting wire with scissors. These scissors are designed for if you use my classroom scissors, I'm going to have someone take you out and throttle you because it will ruin them. And if you use your little sister's scissors, your mom's going to call me and be upset, and I'm going to be upset with you. So don't do that. I've had to have that phone call before. Okay, so we have orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. I fit it into my jack. This can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Squeeze it in. This one happens to have gone in all the way. If I look here at the end, it's it's not easy to see, but you can actually see the ends, the, the cut copper ends. 
sticking through. On the end here, I can see the copper that's going to push in. I can see that the wire's all the way up. And on this end, you can actually see it better now, this clip thing that's going to be put, I can see is going to hit the blue. So that's not a bad place. And now I'm ready for my crimper. I'll open my tool all the way. And then I'm going to slide it into place. If it has trouble going in, stop. Because if it has trouble going in, you're doing something wrong. I'm going to back out just a little bit. And I'm going to crimp. Pull down to crimp. Notice it stays shut. I always like to crimp twice and three times. Pull it out. If it gets stuck, stop because you're doing something wrong. And then before you do anything else, close your tool. And now I have crimped my wire. I'm almost, oh, if you look here, there's a little tiny piece that now touches and pushes against this insulation. That's going to hold it into place, make it really tight on there. My last step, and in a very real sense, the most important step, is my network test. I want to make sure my wire works. Here I have a picture of the link runner itself and what looks like a wire. I'm going to plug this in to the leftmost port of my link runner. And if all goes well, oops, and not all went well, there is a problem with this wire. If this had worked right, all I would see is a spinny, 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 and then a spool on the end. Something's wrong with this particular wire, and so it's telling me there's some short with the wire itself. The, in this case, I think it's the physical wire that I'm using. If I were to plug in both sides, I would get a, a nice straight through and I'm not here just because the wire I've used is somehow gone bad. That happens sometimes. In a perfect world this wouldn't be an issue but I don't live there either. At least you see the steps. The steps are the same regardless. The only differences between the different type of Ethernet cable, the different types, is the order that your wires are in and you'll get that from your textbook or from EIATIA. All right, thank you for listening. I hope you've learned something, and that's an Ethernet cable.